Square has come a long way since they released their first product, a credit card reader for your smartphone. Since launching in 2010, they built a multi-billion dollar business by launching several new hardware and software products for small businesses. But the merchant business isn't likely the biggest growth opportunity for Square. While their merchant business is still growing, Square's Cash App, a digital wallet, has exploded in popularity and revenue growth. The fast-growing Cash App is a big reason why Square's stock price rose to over $130 per share. It's an incredible jump after the stock fell to $32 in March. I know a lot of people feel like they missed the boat on buying Square stock, but I have a bullish story that may surprise you. In this video, I'll show you my intrinsic value for Square by analyzing their market, growth opportunities, competition, and leadership. If you'd like to see more valuations like this one, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. It would mean a lot. I really appreciate your support. Square's total addressable market is a combination of two markets. Its merchant business targets small businesses and the Cash App targets consumers. As you can see in Square's investor deck, both are massive opportunities for growth. Square's seller ecosystem represents an 85 billion plus opportunity and the Cash App represents a 60 billion plus opportunity. And this is just in the United States alone. Square makes money a few different ways from their merchant business. The transaction revenue they earn from processing payments is the biggest money maker for Square. Their point of sale products bring in more than two billion a year and there's still plenty of room to grow to get to 39 billion. Square software revenue consists of several software products for restaurants, retail, and additional services like payroll, invoices, and appointments. Their software products and add-on services represent a $30 billion opportunity. Square Capital provides loans to small businesses that the big banks typically ignore. Square's average loan to a small business is 7,000, while a traditional bank is 1 million. Speed is a differentiator as well. Loans with traditional banks take two weeks, but Square's customers can receive their loan in as little as one to two business days. It's a 12 billion plus opportunity and Square is just getting started. The financial services opportunity is 5 billion and it consists of Square's debit card revenue opportunities and instant transfers, what Square charges a 1.5% fee for. Now let's look at the Cash App. Square believes the Cash App ecosystem has a 9 trillion opportunity in addressable volume in the US alone. The Cash App is often called a digital wallet, but I think a digital bank is a better way to think about it. The Cash App is now offering almost a full suite of banking products with personal lending likely on the way next. With Square recently acquiring a banking license, the Cash App transforming to a digital bank seems more real than ever. I don't know anybody who enjoys going to a big bank and the Cash App can bring all the banking products in one place. Why use a bank for direct deposits, a bank for mortgages, a brokerage for stocks, and a broker for crypto? It seems like a digital bank product like the Cash App will be the obvious choice in the future. When thinking about Square's competition, you need to be aware of two companies. The first company is Stripe. The way I think about it is that Stripe owns online payment processing and Square owns the offline payment processing space. Stripe owns online payments because developers love Stripe and use it to process payments in their web applications. Companies like Slack, DoorDash, and Lyft use Stripe. Square handles online payments for businesses too, but just like all of Square's merchant products, it's geared for small businesses like coffee shops, restaurants, and other smaller vendors. However, nobody really competes with Square's offline business products. The second competitor for Square is Venmo, which is owned by PayPal. An interesting stat to know is that Venmo and the Cash App both already have more mobile users than the big banks. Venmo has been the biggest peer-to-peer -peer payment platform, but the Cash App is catching up fast and likely already has more monthly active users. Venmo had 25 million monthly active users at the end of 2019, 
compared to Square, who had 24 million. However, Sensor Tower shows that the Cash App recently surpassed 40 million monthly active users. Although keep in mind that Sensor Tower counts monthly active users as users who have opened the Cash App at least once per month, while Square counts users who transact at least once a month. Venmo is the biggest competitor to watch because the company that can execute the digital bank concept would be the biggest beneficiary of a winner take most market. Square CEO Jack Dorsey is also Twitter CEO and one of the most famous CEOs in the world. What I like about Dorsey is how he believes he can accomplish his vision by focusing on one critical need at a time. Dorsey's big insight about Square was from a woman who sold flowers from a flower cart right outside his apartment in 2009. They had built up a relationship but she was reluctant to accept credit card payments because she only wanted to collect cash. This changed one day when she told Jack she just missed out on a big sale because a customer had to go to the ATM to get cash, but he never came back. So she told Jack she would try Square's new credit card reader to help make a sale. That's when Jack realized that the job of Square was to help a business make a sale and then help them make more sales. All of Square's products and services do exactly that. Without that insight, Dorsey said Square would have just been another credit card reader company. It seems obvious in hindsight, but it wasn't at the time. This is what you see in the Cash App today. It started out as a way to send payments to your friends, and now it has almost a full suite of banking products. Dorsey likes to attack one problem at a time until they have a platform where everything can be done in one place. Here's what he said in the most recent earnings call. We're not just a peer-to-peer -peer app. We're not just a stock purchasing app. We're not just a Bitcoin app. We have everything in one and everything in terms of how I think about my own personal finances and spend my money is all in one simple straightforward app that we will continue to make better and add more features that complement some of these critical needs that people are telling us they have. For my valuation, I used a 10-year discounted cash flow analysis to determine my intrinsic value for Square. I estimated Square would earn $10 billion in revenue in 2029 from their merchant business alone. This means Square would grab a 10% market share based on their estimated $100 billion opportunity worldwide. So far, Square has penetrated less than 3% of this market. Estimating revenue for the Cash App is where things get interesting and why I'm excited for Square's future. I discovered research by Max Friedrich of ARK Invest, who's an analyst in the fintech space and covers Square. The white paper compared the Cash App to Venmo. I highly recommend that you download the free white paper on ARK Invest's website. Friedrich's forecast shows there will be 220 million digital wallet users in the United States by 2024. In my valuation, I stuck with 220 million users in 2029 to be more conservative. I estimated Square captures 50% of the entire digital wallet market, as I expect the Cash App to be the winner in the category. This means the Cash App would have 110 million active users. Traditional banks like Bank of America, Wells Fargo, and JP Morgan have an annualized revenue per customer between $700 and $800, while the Cash App is 30. If the Cash App becomes the first true digital bank, you could expect that $30 number to rise to where the banks are at today. A $700 annualized revenue per customer multiplied by 110 million customers equals 77 billion. Adding 10 billion to Square's merchant business, I estimated Square's revenue is 87 billion in 2029. After I inputted all the numbers in my spreadsheet, my fair value for Square is $203 per share. I know 203 is much higher than their current share price, but there's a few reasons to believe in this story. The first is network effects. The Cash App is growing exponentially in revenue growth and popularity. The Cash App consistently ranks in the top 10 of the App Store's free app rankings. It's spreading faster than social media did because people are incentivized to share the Cash App with their friends and family. You want your family to send you money, but you might not want them to follow you on your favorite social media platforms. Square's growth can come from scaling their customer base in the Cash App and Merchant ecosystems, 
cross-selling other products in each ecosystem, and then connecting the merchant and cash app ecosystems together. Connecting the two ecosystems together creates unique opportunities for Square to build better products for buyers and sellers. When things go mass market, the average buyer makes the simple decision of choosing the category winner. Apple's iPhone made Nokia's phones obsolete. Google crushed all other search engine companies. Picking the clear winner of a category can lead to 10x gains, while picking a bucket of stocks in the category will lead to less gains. I've given you a very optimistic story for Square. My valuation for Square stock is over $200 for 2020. It may or may not reach that price in the short term, but the long-term potential of Square is very exciting to me. In the comments below, let me know if you believe in my story or disagree. Bulls and bears are welcome. If you enjoy this valuation, I'd appreciate it if you like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.